Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to run through some basic photo editing. Um, some of you might recognize some of these things from uh, different photo apps you've used or maybe you used Photoshop before. What we're going to work with today is going to be more exposure and white balance and some other things within the uh, what's called camera raw interface. And so to get started on this, I'm just going to go to a folder where I have a photo to work with. And all you have to do is just drag that photo right onto Photoshop and it should open it up just like that. Now real briefly, I'm just going to discuss uh, just the interface of what you're looking for just in case you've never seen Photoshop before. So on the left over here, we've got a toolbar full of different tools that you can use within Photoshop. Uh, a lot of these that have the little icon right down here in the corner, it's a little triangle. If you hold on to the tool, it'll open up another menu here where you can see other um, options for that tool that you can use. Also, if you hover over these tools, just like this, it gives you a little teaser to let you know what the tool is. We'll actually be working with the crop tool in a little bit. Um, over here in the middle, this is what's called your canvas. This is if you open up a photo or if you start a new project, this is where all the work gets done right here in the canvas. Um, over here on the right, you've got a bunch of different tabs here. And yours might look a little different. It just depends on what workspace you're in. So about the workspace, I'm going to go up here to Window. And you'll see the second option here is Workspace. And so if your interface looks a little bit different, if you don't see the Layers tab there, then what you can do is just find Essentials on this list and just click uh, Reset Essentials right here, right down this list. And Resetting Essentials just kind of starts this it starts it over so that that way you know you can have the default look so we're going to be working with layers down right down here on the bottom anything that you put on the canvas anything that you're using here is going to be shown right here it's going to stack up one on top of the other we're not going to be working with any other layers in here it's just going to be the one layer for the photo but if you're looking for where all the different elements in your canvas are they're in your layers tab stacked up right over here. So the first thing I'm going to do before doing any actual uh, editing of the color or any of that for the for this project. And so if you go back over here to the toolbar right here, one, two, three, four, five tools down, you should be able to see this rectangle looking thing here. And that is your crop tool. Again, if you hover over it, it'll tell you what it is. I always like to start with the crop. That way I can get the photo set just the way I want first. Let's go right up here to this upper toolbar right here. And if you click this arrow, you can see different default settings. These default options here are pretty much the standard crops that most photographers use or that you see like prints being made in whenever you see like a print on somebody's wall or home. I'm on 5.7 right now. As you can see, that's vertical you see these double arrows here, you can click this and make it go from a vertical crop to a wide crop. I'm going to stick with the wide. Now if you click on the screen here, you can move this box around and you can drag these corners in in order to get the crop the way you want. And you'll also notice these grid lines. These are pretty much like what I was talking about in Rule of Thirds when y'all were doing those compositions it's real easy to set your crop to something like a rule of thirds like right now I have this uh, character from the play he is right there on that thirds line and so I like this crop here I'm gonna keep this and so in order to set it you can either hit enter on your keyboard or right up here there's a green check mark you can click this and it then sets your crop one thing you want to do after you have your crop set for your photo is go back over here and the top tool on here is called the move tool. I'm going to click on that because if I leave the crop tool on and I keep clicking on the screen, it's going to keep wanting to crop my photo over and over and over. And we already set the crop so we don't need to change that anymore. So I'm just going to click on the move tool and that's that. Next thing I'm going to do in order to uh, go into the camera raw interface that I mentioned earlier is I'm going to go up here to filter and what we want to do first is choose this second option here that says convert for smart filters. I'm going to click on that 
And one thing that you'll see is that this was before called the background layer. Now that's the default for any image that's open in Photoshop. It's automatically going to be called the background layer. Once we, once we turned on the convert for smart filters, this changed to layer zero, which means we can manipulate this now and move it around and do things with it. One other thing you'll notice is that it has this little icon right here in the corner of the thumbnail, and that signifies that it's a smart object. Now what a smart object is, it's, it's kind of a protective layer over whatever is in your canvas, your photos or other graphics and things that you might drop into Photoshop to work with. It's a protective layer that anytime you add an effect or make a modification to that layer, it protects it so that it's not permanent. It makes it so that you can go back in and re-edit and make changes and manipulate it over and over again. And the original image is going to stay the same. It's not going to be affected. All your, all your modifications are being made to the smart layer. And so that you can always go back to the original and it's not going to be changed. That'll make sense a little more once we're done with this. But this is called non-destructive editing. And so that, that way your original images stay the original and any modifications you make are, are just within Photoshop and you can forever go back in and make changes. I'm going to go back up here to filter again. And I'm going to click right here on where it says camera raw filter. Give it a minute to open up. Okay, so I have this open. Your interface might look a little bit different. Uh, what you might want to do is click these double arrows up here in the upper right hand corner. That'll make your your uh, camera raw interface full screen like I have mine right now. So what I'm going to start with, right up here in this upper right hand corner you have this graph looking thing. This is what's called your histogram. And this shows you all of the color information that is contained in your photo. On the left side of this, you'll see right underneath it says blacks. This is the darkest, blackest areas of your photo. If you move a little bit to the right there, you'll, you'll see what's called the shadows. And that is the not totally black areas, but they're darker areas of the photo. And you can see on this photo, there's a lot of data here. Um, if you go back into the black series, you'll see that it's peaking in these blacker areas. And that's because of all this black space that's in this photo. There's and so right here, that's why there's a lot of data here. And same with the shadows. This is a pretty dark photo. And so you've got a lot of data in the shadows. Next, you've got the exposure area. And I guess this is more of the mid-range. And this isn't a very bright photo. So, of course, you don't have a lot from here and to the right of it. Now, again, now you're moving over here to the highlights. It's not a lot of bright areas. So you don't see much here. you got a little tiny peak in there but not much and then over here are the whites these are the be the brightest areas of the photo and of course this is a dark photo so you don't see much in there next we're gonna go down and we're gonna look at this tab called basic if you click this little arrow it will pop open the basic menu now this right here might be might look a little familiar to some of you if you've done some editing on your phone with photos like within uh, Visco or Snapseed or some other similar um, editing programs. So I'm going to go through and explain some of these. I'm going to start here at the top. Your temperature is, think of the lighting in the room. Sometimes your light bulbs are a little more bluish and that's why you have blue on the left side of the scale. Sometimes your light is a little more warm, a little more orangish. And so that's what this yellow is on the uh, right side of the scale. And what this does is let's say you take a photo that is very it's got a lot of warm lighting sometimes in order to balance that to make it look a little more white lighting you want to add blue and so as we go this way this is going to add blue to the lighting of the photo and if you go all the way to the right or the left there of course it's going to look very very blue the opposite happens if you go this way it's going to make it very warm and so that would be adding more warm light to a photo that has maybe a lot of cool bluer light into it, right? And so usually you don't have to go all the way to the edges. You can do that if you're just playing around and want to have fun with it. But normally you're going to be somewhere in this mid-range 
when you're fixing your white balance and what I usually look at are the whites in the photos and so I'm looking right here at his collar you want to look at the whites in the photos and also the skin tones for where this should be you want skin tones that look natural or that match the lighting like the lighting that they use here was very reddish very warm and so I don't really want to stray too far from that so I'm going to keep it more on the warm side I'm not going to go too cool with it I'm going to keep it right about here I feel like the tint also works the same way you can add greenish tint to it or you can add a more magenta tint to it the other thing you can also do is right here you've got this eyedropper thing I'm going to click on it and I'm going to click on his collar that adjusted it a lot more than I would have but it actually looks pretty good I always like to set the temperature first because then it's you can see it better how dark the photo is how bright the photo is and how much you should really adjust it to make it look proper one shortcut that exists is this auto button here and sometimes auto does a good job other times auto is gonna ruin your photo <laughs> and what happens is the the computer only knows what it sees on screen and so if it sees a lot of black areas like up here there's you know there's still a lot of black there um, it's gonna try to brighten that up and to pull out some details in that darker area of the photo and so if you have nighttime photos like this happens a lot with football photos when I'm photographing out on the field at night um, it pulls the blacks up way too much and it makes it really grainy looking really noisy looking but like let's just let's just hit this button and see what happens that actually didn't do too bad I can see a little bit of noise and grain in this area but it's not bad um, okay so now we hit that and you'll see that a bunch of these sliders got moved around things got adjusted down here and so usually after I hit the auto button I go through this and I just kind of start messing with things as I like them and as I see them so and now each of these sliders here you've got contrast which is going to add add more separation to your brighter and darker areas or if you turn it down then it's gonna bring those together and give it more of a mid look so I'm gonna take this down and you'll start to see that the dark areas aren't so dark the bright areas aren't so bright it just kind of flattens things out and you'll see it on the histogram as you do this and so now I'm gonna turn this all the way up and the brighter areas are starting to get turned up the darker areas are starting to get turned up and there's less in the middle um, but these highlights shadows whites and blacks um, you can go ahead and mess with those to your liking to whatever looks good to you so this texture slider depending on what your photo is of you might have some textures to whatever you photographed and so if you turn this down it's gonna smooth out your textures it doesn't always look all that good so you might not want to go too hard with the texture slider and same thing for if you want to intensify the texture of something then you'll turn it up clarity is going to work with the details of the photo it's either going to enhance them when you turn this up or it's going to bring them down a little bit when you turn it down dehaze is it's going to take those bright areas and those dark areas and it's going to separate them more and, and push them more to those edges and kind of clear out the middle and that's for if you have a hazy image it helps to clear up that haze and that's kind of how it's done it's it's really similar to contrast vibrance and saturation here are going to enhance your colors uh, by using this saturation too you can actually turn this down and go with the black and white look um, up here next to the auto button I'll go back up here for a minute you can also hit black and white B and W and this will auto black and white your entire photo and so this actually pulls out all the color data and just keeps it black and white if you look up here you'll see that there's only one graph going on here and if I turn this off then you see the graphs of green blue and red here so I'm gonna go down here more and I'm gonna go to this curve and I'm gonna click this open and what you have here is you have the histogram in this graph right here and you've got a line in between and what you can do here is you well you've also got highlights lights darks and shadows down here underneath you can mess with these sliders to work with those areas of the photos remember how I said 
this this histogram is 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 a bit of a spectrum here of all the color data that's in your photo and so you can work with just the shadow area and if you look at that line right here that goes across the histogram you can see this being bent around depending on where I slide it and move this thing and so that's the range that you're working within that's the range that you're working within when you mess with the sliders when you when you see it you can see it bending for what part of the color data it's manipulating so this looks decent enough if you want to do a comparison from when you started to where you're at right down here if you look at the lower right corner of the photo you'll see this icon right here so this icon right here if you click it and turn it on it basically turns off all of the adjustments you've made if you click it again then it turns them back on so you can toggle back and forth between the original image and what you've edited color mixer can be fun to play with you've got hue saturation luminance and all so I'm gonna go back to hue now in here you can find specific colors and then start manipulating the hues of those colors and so right now I'm working with the reds if you look right here on the couch or in this doorway you'll see how the reds are affected by me turning this up and down at the left end it's a little more pinkish at the right end it's a little more orangish it just depends on what you want you can manipulate your colors by using these sliders and changing the hues around I'm gonna go into the saturation one next and what this does is it takes those specific colors and you can saturate certain colors either more or less and so let's say that I wanted to do an edit where the only color in the photo was red I can take every other slider turn them all down and pretty much what you're left with is going to be what the actual red tones in the photo are so you got a little bit here in the couch you got in the stripes in the wall and the woodwork here skin tones so what I'm gonna to do to reset this is these little arrow things you can double click them and they go back to zero luminance this one is going to well you can see it right here on the reds this is darker deeper red and this is brighter red so let's slide this and show what it looks like there you go you got a more deeper reds and then you got more bright reds we're gonna go back to zero with this next we're gonna go into color grading and you've got four options here again you can either mess with the mid-tone range of your photo you can mess with the shadows which is going to be the darkest areas of the photo or the highlights which are the brightest area of the, of the photo and you also have this last one here this is global and so this messes with the whole photo not just like those certain ranges and so you can balance things out like this you can add like a little bit of a custom color I kind of like it this way it looks a little more natural to the eye I think yeah so you can use this to either like balance out your colors a little bit kind of like the white balance or you can just set like some different kind of tones to it so that the colors are all affected a little bit different from what's natural I like this though it just helps it make it look a little more natural so I'm gonna leave that there now what you can do with the geometry tab here if you hover over these it'll give you an idea of what each button here will do normally I just hit the auto when I'm using this and what this is gonna do it's gonna look at the vertical and the horizontal lines of your photo and it's gonna try to straighten them out and again this is a computer it's only looking at things on the screen and the lines it's not it's just looking at the lines and trying to make vertical lines vertical and horizontal lines horizontal sometimes it works pretty good sometimes it doesn't a lot of times I'll use this but then also go in and do my own straightening and so yeah I like I like it with this little bit of vertical here I'm turn that down and that straightens out the vertical you want to use this grid too that helps you to get your line straight whenever that's important okay so now it's straight 
So I'm going to click on this Effects tab next. You've got two options here. You've got Grain and you've got Vignette. The Grain is like a noisiness, like a staticky almost look to the background. This is something that you would see in film photography. Each film stock has a different quality of grain to it. Some is more fine, some is more coarse than others, depending on the film and the, the quality of the film. So you can mess with this, it's just a special effect that you can turn up and down. I always encourage to play with things like this just to see what they do. Uh, vignetting, what this does is it's either going to set your corner areas darker, you see that, those corner areas got real dark when I turned this down, or if you turn it up, it's going to brighten your corner areas. A lot of times this kind of look is popular with portrait photography because you black out, you darken up the corners, and you put more emphasis than in the middle of the photo. You've got some controls here that you can play with, this midpoint, uh, the roundness, the feathering. But yeah, you can work with those settings to manipulate it however you want. I'm gonna... One more thing I'm gonna show you is that if you were to go black and white on here, this color mixer now becomes the black and white mixer. And so what happens is, in this black and white mixer, all the original colors that were in the photograph are now turned into black and white grayish tones. And you can work with these to make some stand out a little more than others, make them darker, make them, br make them brighter, whatever you want to do. So you have a little more control over your photo and you can mess with specific colors. So there, that looks fine for a photo. I, I, I like the way this is edited. I can look at the original and look at the edited one and I like it. So right down here, I know it's hard to see on my screen, but there's an OK button. Now one thing that I want you to also look at here is with your layer zero, which is the photograph, You've now got smart filters listed under here, and you've got camera raw filter listed under there. So any filtering, any effects that you add to this photo are all going to come on now as smart filters. And so this is good because it's not permanent. Like I said, if I double click on this camera raw filter, what happens is it opens the camera raw interface back up again. And all the changes I made are still here saved within this interface. So if a week from now I decide, you know what, I really do want this black and white, I could come back in, click the black and white, and now my image is black and white. So that's what's good about using Camera Raw. Nothing is permanent. The other thing is, these little eyeball looking icons, these are icons to say whether something is visible or not. So I'm gonna click the eyeball next to the Camera Raw filter and that turns off the camera raw filter. You can't see the changes that were made in camera raw filter when I click this eyeball and turn it off. Same with up here on the layer. If I was to click the eyeball thing on the layer, it now turns my layer off so you can't see it anymore. We're gonna leave it on, of course, because that's what we want. And so that is some basic photo manipulation in Photoshop to help improve the lighting and the color within your images. Uh, we're going to stop here on this lesson. This is as far as we're going to go. And so now I'm going to save it. So I'm going to go up here to File, and I'm going to click Save. You can do File, Save, or Save As. They're both going to, with your first time saving it, it's pretty much going to give you the same thing. Now, mine, because I've already set up my Photoshop the way I like it, um, it's automatically asking if I want to save it onto the computer. What you're going to see is a different interface asking to save to the cloud or to save to the computer. I say to save to the computer because then your files are on your computer. They live on your computer rather than in the cloud. We had a lot of problems last year with uh, projects being in the cloud. It slowed down loading time and work time in the classroom. So I say to keep everything um, on the computer. I'm going to give this a name. I'm just going to call it first edit. That's what your assignment is going to be called. And I'm going to hit save on this. And there we go, you can see by this tab right here, first edit PSD. 
You also want it to be saved as a PSD first. That is a Photoshop document. And what happens then is I can go in here, you'll see right next to my photo in the same folder, I've got first edit. I could double click this and reopen it in Photoshop and it'll have all my changes made over here. All right. But now what I want you to do is I want you to export this. We're going to go to file and then we're going to go right here to the middle of the list where it says export and we're going to do export as it's going to show your photo in here. I'm going to click up here in the upper right where it says format and we're going to go to JP JPG. The rest of this can pretty much stay the same. I'm not worried about any of this other stuff so you can leave all this as it is. Um, just make sure that this quality slider turn this up as high as it goes. So I'm going to put that up to 7. Right down here you can barely see it but there's a blue button. So I'm going to click on the blue button. This is going to ask where I want it to save. I am going to save this in the same folder that the others are in, which I believe was called First Edits. Yeah, right here. So this is where I'm going to save it, and it's called First Edit. Boom. So let's go to the folder, and you'll see the original image right here. You'll see my edited version right here, and then you'll see the Photoshop file. What I want you all to turn in are these two right here. Do not turn in the PSD file. These are really big files. A lot of times they're, they're really big and it takes forever for me to download them. So I do not like for you to send me the PSD file. Unless some, some in some assignments I might ask for it, but right now I don't want to see the PSD file. I want to see your original photo and I want to see your edited photo and that's the assignment. All right, you have any questions, of course, you can come talk to me. Other than that, um, enjoy your Photoshop edit.